Domino Thinking presents Natural Born Speakers with your host, Allison Donaghy. If you are born to talk and want to know how to build your career around it, then Natural Born Speakers is the show for you. Now grab your seat because this is the place to be. Now here is your host, Allison. Hi, thanks for tuning in with us today. Today, my guest is Laura, and I'm really looking forward to hearing all these things that she has to talk with us about. She helps bring the snap, sizzle, and pop back into business with a combination of soul, felt, inspiration, and a no BS tool and technique. And I love the no BS part because I am (laughs) all about that. And anyone who knows me knows that that is true. She knows the difference between outward success and deep heart-centered satisfaction in business because she's experienced them both. And she can intuitively guide you towards your passion and purpose while making the money and impact you are meant to. This sounds like pretty damn good to me. So welcome, (laughs) Laura. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm doing really well. And I haven't heard that in a while, so I was like, damn, I'm awesome. (laughs) You are awesome, let me tell you. Now all of our listeners get to hear how awesome you are, too. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay, well, in that bio, it mentioned you you have had both, you know, those non-heart-centered moments and those centered (laughs) moments. So tell us, like, tell us how did you get from what that was and how you got to here? Yeah, I would love to do that. So this is one of my favorite stories to tell. And the I'm already going to tell you the most, the funniest and worst moment of the whole story was when I was on my honeymoon and I was sobbing. And, <laughs> and it was not because of my new husband. It was because I had, <laughs> yes, I had you know, finally taken a break from my business and I had looked around and I was on my way back, back to said business from the honeymoon break. And I looked around and I was like, wow, I hate all of this. Um, and I had, you know, started a successful business, well started and grew a successful business. Obviously it takes more than just starting to become successful. (laughs) Um, but I wrote a book, I was being featured places. I had clients, I had programs, you know, I had all like the outward stuff that looks really, really good uh, when it comes to being a business owner, especially being an online business owner. And I hated it. I was miserable. I had planned out my entire 2016 worth of like content and programs and blog posts and guest posts and (laughs) all the stuff that we do. And I was like, I don't want to go back to that. And I had this breakdown on the honeymoon actually because I was coming, you know, back into the world and I read this email from somebody that they were launching a program that they were all excited about. And I found myself in that moment being so super jealous. And I, you know, maybe people listening to this can relate and we're not supposed to get jealous, you know, or like, Oh, hush, hush. Like, don't talk about that. And But instead of feeling bad about it, I really examined my jealousy and I said, why am I actually jealous of this person? I don't want her life. I don't want to be launching this program. I don't want to do what she does. But I found that I was jealous of her passion uh, and how excited she was about this this program that she was launching. Um, And so right in that moment, I was like, screw it. I'm deleting everything and I'm starting again and I don't know what it's going to look like but I don't care I don't care if people follow me I don't care if I don't care I just have to do it for me and uh it's was the best decision I've ever made that is super cool so how what what changed like what was the difference between what that was and what it is now so a few things so one is I gave myself permission to be myself so basically my new business brand, everything started with a question, which was, what if I can be successful by being myself? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to just Love pause that. right there because it is <laughs> like, it sounds so simple, because, but it's such a profound question. And I have to ask myself constantly <laughs> because it's so mm-hmm. easy to forget <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, get caught up 
what other people's versions of success are. And that's really what I was doing with my original business um, mm -hmm. was again, like, okay, doing the book and the did and the bit. Um, and so now I really tune in on what do I actually want to be doing? I follow my intuition. That's um, on a daily basis. So like oh, today my body doesn't want to sit at the computer, like it wants to get out and move and like talk to people and go to the beach or whatever it is. Um, when it comes to launching anything, it's definitely my intuition and in that question I continue to ask myself. Mm. Um, I think we're breaking up here a little bit. Oh no. Oh yeah, maybe we're better now. Can you hear me Tell okay? Me what, repeat what you just said. Um, okay, so I'll read the end of that. So, uh, <laughs> I know, and no pressure, right? But tell me exactly what it was, word for word, and spit it out and get it back to me. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I'm sure everyone listening to your radio show, radio show knows that none of this is, like, like written out, which is what no, I love, not. and that's actually... <laughs> yeah, I love, love that, and, I, and that totally goes along with what I was saying, which is I really just follow my intuition moment to moment, like with clients, right? What do I actually want to be doing? And I give myself permission to, instead mm -hmm. of the like, okay, I have this lofty dream of like building this empire, but that's un unrealistic and like shrinking myself down. It's like, no, I give myself permission to be as loud or as crazy or as quiet or as whatever as I need to be in every moment. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at your website here too. I love your website. <laughs> I Thank do. You it's so really much. it's beautiful. And people can find you at laurasprinkle.com. And she's going to sprinkle yes, some love you. on you because <laughs> I bet that's not for <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. so my last so name I is know we, awesome. <laughs> what's that? It, my last name is definitely an advantage in this business. So. <laughs> it is. You have a great name. You really do. Yeah. It just it sounds good. It flows good. You can make up like silly little puns about it. I love it. <laughs> I want to <laughs> go back to what you were saying, though, about other people's success and not defining your success by their success. Because I often wonder if they mm -hmm. even believe their definition of success. Mm. Right. Because when you were planning your business and you had the whole year mapped out and you had all of your posts, everything already on the outside, you were looking really successful. Yeah. So anybody who looked at what you were doing, broke it all down to its finer parts or or sourced out sections of it or whatever it was that they were doing would probably go, whoa, this is her idea of success. But actually for you, it wasn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can't help but wonder how many people are out there appearing to be successful and yet not feeling it. Ooh, yes, such a good point. And from talking to pretty much all of my clients, I would say that the majority of people who look really successful, well, not the majority, I guess it really depends. But, you know, if you really get behind the scenes and talk to people, um, if they're constantly striving for outward success, like maybe they're not feeling it on the inside, but I don't want to actually make a generalization about everybody. <laughs> yeah. But then you do have those other people who are really quite happy with their success levels and they are successful mm -hmm. by any right. Like it's, um, they are very in tune with what they want. They're going after what they want. And, and it is very aligned with their sole purpose but then there's there's other people who are going through the motions and they're not aligned. Yeah. So what are some like telltale signs that maybe we're not necessarily aligned with what we're doing? Or is that putting you on the spot too much? Ooh, no, no, I love that question. Um, so I would say some telltale signs are, again, that jealousy. Like if you constantly find yourself jealous of other people stuff. I um, mean, I did um, actually a TV up, or I have a little soul fire TV that I do instead of vlogging. Again, one of those decisions that I made <laughs> because I was like, I'd rather do videos. Um, and I talk about how, you know, if you're constantly feeling jealous, like you're probably not jealous of 
you know, I want to have exactly what they have, but rather like the feelings behind it. So maybe they have a really put together brand um, rather than like their exact color scheme or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you're constantly finding yourself jealous, that would be a sign Um, or like really struggling to get ideas. Um, I find that a lot of my clients come to me when, you know, they've had some success again, but then all of a sudden they hit this wall and they're like, okay, uh, why can't I think of another program? Or why am I like hesitating to go out and get speaking gigs? Like, you know, whatever it is, there's like stuck place. Um, and it's, they're usually not giving themselves permission to do what they really want to be doing, or they're kind of stuck in a model that they think that they have to do, which is another way of saying the same thing, basically. Right. About permission. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, those are two really, really great points, too. I think there's um, I think there's a lot to be said about exploring the jealousy part because mm-hmm. it tells us it if, if we're able to get away from that negativity, because often jealousy means that ill will towards the other person. So they stop having what you want. <laughs> <laughs> but if we can get rid of that part and start yeah. looking at um, what's driving that and using it as a tool to grow, I think that's mm-hmm. the positive part of jealousy. And mm-hmm. eventually you won't have it because you'll have exactly what it is that you want. But every once in a while, you may bump up against it again and you get to go, huh, why am I feeling that way about that? And it's one of those, I think it's a marker emotion mm-hmm. that when you're having that emotion, it's it's an indication of something else. Yes, yes, I would, I would agree with that. And I love like, you know, flipping around like the general thoughts about something so like jealousy is supposed to be bad but what if what if we look at it as information instead of good or bad um and i love doing that with all emotions basically (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think it's great and i think that we don't talk about those things enough right i think Mm. if we stop taking that ugly part of it and like take that ugly part of it away that gives us that room to Mm. explore and yes. jealousy is, yeah. is, is sure one of those things that can be really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I wrote another whole post about the word hate and how, like, again, we're not supposed to say that word or or, or feel that emotion. Um, but if you, if you can sort of look at it and, and sit with it and really, like, okay, so why am I feeling so strongly about this? Like, you'll probably get some gold nuggets out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know we weren't allowed to say that when we were kids. We weren't allowed to say we hated. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Don't... there's some things I hated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably in relation to green vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Brussels sprouts and vinegar, still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, love British parents. Fabulous. <laughs> So then what do you think is the trick? Like you talked about permission as well. What do you think is the trick for giving ourselves permission? Because again, the that's trick one of those. For giving ourselves permission. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I just want everything today. Um, <laughs> I think it's one of those things that, again, it sounds so simple. It, can I make money and be successful being myself? That sounds really simple. Like, well, who else would you be? And yet it is a very com- <laughs> complicated thing for us. And I think permission is the same thing. Like, it should be pretty easy to give ourselves permission to do what we want. But yet we don't. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, like, you know, when we were children, we didn't have to give ourselves permission. You- you know, we or we constantly gave ourselves permission. Uh, <laughs> we don't know whatever we wanted to do, and slowly but surely, we've been trained to you know look outside of ourselves for permission, like permission to leave the classroom and use the bathroom, permission to to eat certain things, or permission for whatever we're doing. Um, and so, so it is more difficult than it sounds to give yourself permission but I think starting with the small things again I love love, like even though so um to get more specific about my story a little bit I used to be more involved in health programs um and now I'm in branding so when I was um sorry even 
in branding now, I still start my clients out when they're like still sort of getting the feel for listening to themselves and giving themselves permission and listening to their intuition. And I give them assignments around food because food is, you know, everybody eats, <laughs> uh, hopefully. And, and so like giving yourself permission to eat what you want to eat is a great, great starting point. Um, and even if it's not every day, but like just pick one meal and give yourself permission to eat what you want to eat. Uh, and it can really help you learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's interesting because I didn't even make that connection when I was just asking you about the whole permission thing about going back to when we lose that permission, like that, mm-hmm. um, our connection to permission and how it becomes somebody else's control and their control and it's not in our control. Mm-hmm. And that, wow, yeah, I'm going to have to spend some time thinking about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you not giving me? yourself permission to do I'd love to know (laughs) (laughs) well and I tend to do most things I want to do and (laughs) so on the surface it looks like I give myself probably permission to do an awful lot like if I want to go on a trip I go on a trip if I want to jump out of a plane I jump out of a plane uh but um there's probably more of my permission stuff is emotional or those imaginary boundaries that I'm not giving myself permission to cross. Mm -hmm. And that makes it, it's interesting. Cause like when I see somebody who's like, Oh, I don't think I could jump out of a plane. I'm like, what do you mean? Go, (laughs) but it's not part of my uh, fear base, right? Like it's, Mm -hmm. I'm quite comfortable doing those sort of things. So then it makes it look like I must be that way all over the place. But thinking about how we had to ask permission to go to the washroom and how we had to ask permission to eat. Like we had to ask permission to leave the table when we were at dinner time. And so, yeah, there's a lot of that permission stuff. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's really My hard. goodness. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of, like, if you're working with clients, what is it that you offer your clients? So I offer them branding packages. So we start out with a brand revision. Um, um, so like I said, a lot of people come to me <laughs> pretty much when they want permission to do what they want to do. So it's funny that we've been talking about permission. <laughs> and I realized my skill for this uh, when, and all of it, when I finally put together, like, you know, my cousin was, uh, she's a teacher and, you know, you know, she did like the school and the college and the kindergarten teacher. So very like straight path. And then she had this opportunity to move to Alaska <laughs> <laughs> and oh. just like work like outside and and all this stuff, and I was the first person she came to, probably because she knew that I was going to be like, hell yeah, you need to go to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, things like this happen happened all the time, or you know, my whole life. And that's really what happens in my business now. As people come to me, like they've found some success. Actually, some of my clients are very successful in what they do. Um, mm-hmm. but they no longer feel aligned to their brand. And so they don't feel like they can grow any for- further. Right. Uh, so it's sort of like shaking off, like, I, you know, I like the whole butterfly, like metamorphosis um, mm-hmm. and becoming who they truly want to be. And a lot of it does have to do with permission. Um, and a lot of it has to do with translating like the feelings and the words that they're using and the feelings they're showing me and kind of putting those into like colors and pixels and graphics um, right. and sort of making it on paper. Mm. Yeah. It's so do you do the designing of it or do you just work with their designers? So <laughs> I have done the whole gamut <laughs> in figuring out my place <laughs> in this whole thing. So the cool thing is, is that since I've done design, I've done web development, I've done marketing. Oh my God. Oh. Stop! Oh, well, that went well. No, I, I just got a new phone system and I thought it was all turned off and I'm pushing all these buttons and it's just not working. That is so funny. Sorry about that. Back to what you were saying. No problem. I think that's like a sign. Um, but <laughs> it's something. Nesh is probably dying on the other end here. My producer going, what? No, don't talk about your damn phone. <laughs> Sorry. 
for inertia. <laughs> Oh, great. Um, so since I've done all the little like nitty gritty pieces, I can, you know, have the conversations with designers like about pixels and about all that stuff. Um, right. But no, my main thing now is like the top level, like working one on one with the client. And I have my own team of people that I would prefer people to work with. But I'm sure that if someone came to me, you know, their team already picked out, <laughs> we can work something right. out. <laughs> yes. Well, sometimes you got to work with what's in place, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It does make it different, though, right? Because you have to learn their language. So when people can go with your team, it just makes it much easier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, get the open <laughs> chain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, okay. I, and I see here we talked about, you mentioned this earlier, too, that you don't have the blogs. You have, like, a soul-free TV. Explain that mm -hmm. decision to me. Yeah, and so I think that's actually where I hate my hate post about the word around writing a blog. Um, let me know if you can hear me, okay? <laughs> Crackling a bit. Okay, uh, I might have touched something. Let me. <laughs> oh, no. oh, okay, can you hear me? Because I want to talk about this. Yeah, and it was so funny because we were talking earlier about live being live and how <laughs> we're not actually able to edit out any of these things that happen. But I just so love when these things happen. I know, I know Nasha doesn't, but I do <laughs> because it is just so life. And I love that the people that are listening to this get to hear and see that things don't always go according to plan and that sometimes you just got to giggle about it and carry on and find the humor in what's happening with it all and um, I think this is hilarious especially because I'm watching Supernatural right now <laughs> <laughs> I love that show Hello. I'm... Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know if Allison's here, but I will talk about my decision to go with uh, Soul Fire TV. So basically, I wrote this blog post all about it, but I, every single week, I would sit there and I would try try to write my blog posts and I would be like, uh, like really, really struggling to get words on the paper, even though I had all these topics lined up that I was really passionate about and I was super excited about. I was just like, oh my God, I really, really don't want to sit here and put this into words or it would just take me way too long. Um, however, on video, I can just turn the camera on and I'll jam, especially because I'm not really that worried um, about quote unquote mess yeah, which makes her look so awesome. And so I just was like, you know what? I'm going to do Soulfire TV. And uh, that was pretty much the end of that. And it's been really, really fun. And I got to to really jam on whatever topics I really want to talk about. Um, and so that doesn't mean that I'm locked in either to Soul Fire TV. Like sometimes I will write instead like I did last week. Um, I didn't feel like filming a video about it. But it, but it really gives me the freedom. Like I said, when you follow your intuition and you're following what you really want to do, it really gives you the freedom to, to play around um, and have fun with whatever it is you're doing instead of being locked into writing. The other thing that I did when I started following my intuition um, was I really like whatever I wanted to offer, you know, sometimes it changes, but I, again, I got really, really clear 
on hello oh okay i'm not oh okay i wasn't sure if i was still connected um so I, again i got really really clear on what i wanted to offer by kind of doing being a jack of all trades and doing everything at first so like i said i've created my websites from scratch i've done the design i've done the branding um, I've done transformational coaching. I've done marketing. I've done like Facebook ads, you know, you name it, I've done it. And therefore I can not only talk to my team about it, but I can also talk to my clients, understand the languaging around it. Um, and I've also figured out that guess what? I don't want to be sitting there like moving pixels around or designing logos necessarily. However, I love, again, translating that big picture branding in into logos by talking with designers. Um, so if you are struggling at all with giving yourself permission to do what you really want to do, that's fine. doesn't mean that you have to like, again, like I did delete your entire business and start over right now. However, it does mean that you can just look at this as more information. So as you continue doing what you're doing, whether it's like in a job, whether it's in, a, you know, in your business, uh, an aspect that you're not really loving right now, like whether that is writing a blog post, um, because you do need to keep in touch with your community. So whatever it is, just again, like, it's not bad to feel like you hate something, just examine it further uh, and keep questioning it um, and questioning the experience and listening to your intuition and you will come to something that works really, really well for you. Right. And I love that part about, you know, following your intuition. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. I think it's something that we don't do very well. Yeah. How do mm -hmm. you, how do you feel your intuition? I would love to know. I love to ask people like where you feel it in your body. Oh, yeah. oh I have a funny story about that too. I'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> usually I feel it like just at the, the top of my stomach, really. Mm. Like if something is right or wrong, that's where I'm going to feel it. That's where I get excited and that's where I get disgusted. And so yeah. for me, that's where I check in. And, and usually you'll hear, you'll, I'll feel a flutter of something going on there. Mm. Mm -hmm. So See, powerful. I, I, it, it's, an, it's a woman that I know, she feels it behind her eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's pretty cool how it's different for different people. But I designed um, an online color course. So to help people pick colors for their home for decorating and okay. that's one of that's one of the things we talk about is how do things feel because it is such a big part of everything. And I said this to my client one day and she said, Call me up about a month later and she said, Oh, guess what? That feeling thing you told me. <laughs> I was out today and I met somebody and I had that feeling and I just knew they weren't a good person for me. <laughs> she goes, It works for more than just picking colors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I so thought it was amazing. just really... so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that it's... is true. And how how often do we like you know we're like oh we shouldn't judge that person even though we feel really icky and then what do you know a month later they turn out to be a really icky person. <laughs> yes, yeah, and I think the more we uh, pay attention to our intuition, the more that we can um, access it. The quicker we can access it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't have to necessarily be around somebody for three months or three years or 13 years before we realize it's probably not good. <laughs> yes, I would say that we know pretty much everything we need to know fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just whether or not we listen. And again, I think that's something that comes back to that permission thing, giving mm -hmm. ourselves permission to honor that. Because back when we were little, it was like, no, be nice to that person. Well, sometimes we didn't want to be nice to that person because that wasn't a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And so then we have to start pretending. Yes, exactly. Damn, childhood sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody listening that wants to go back to being a kid, think about this. You need permission to go to the bathroom and you have to talk to people you don't like. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps before that, maybe before first grade or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, that can, would be a good time. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely, like, even remember, like, first grade. I always, like, 
think of it as like my naughty year because I mean we didn't get like A B C D grades, but we got like N's. I think N was like the bad grade. I don't know what it meant, but N was like, ooh, you oh, did bad. And I got like a lot. Yes, that makes sense. And I got like a few N's because I was just like a crazy pants. And, <laughs> and I always like you know right from then though I learned like okay I can't do that anymore and like quickly switched over to being like the goody two shoes but I think back now and I'm like hell yeah little first grader with all your ends like you did great (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know I was talking to a woman about um school because I've written a book and I mentioned schools in it briefly and she's a teacher and so I had mentioned that schools aren't really set up for critical thinking Mm -hmm. and she is one of these teachers that's very heavily involved in programs in the states uh to get people to think the the students to think critically i think avid is one of the programs she's involved with and common core maybe i'm not sure Mm -hmm. and i'm not even sure where they're all they're offered but it's so exciting for me to hear about these schools and these these places where kids are encouraged to think critically about things because at that age they can start exploring things like permission and hate and intuition and those kind of things and I think come out the other end healthier oh yeah for Mm -hmm. sure yeah imagine if instead of just being told like you're doing it wrong like we really got to explore our personal magic for doing things our personal Mm -hmm. magical way Um, And that's a lot of, like, what branding is about, right? Like, figuring out, once more, your personal magical way. And going back to who you really were as a child is one of the greatest ways to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can remember that long ago. (laughs) That was ages. Damn. I'm going to have to spend some time thinking about that. (laughs) And it's interesting because my son is now 27. And so I got to see all of the effects of being raised by me had on him. And not just me, but the school systems and um, his friends and the internet and all of all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to watch how what the effect what we do has on their personality. Yeah, so would you say that he follows his intuition? Uh, Yeah, I think he's pretty good about it. Maybe not so much when it comes to girls. (laughs) He has a tendency to pick the crazy ones. Um, And we can be crazy. But he, uh, no, I think with things, he's he's really good. I think he's really in touch with who he is. And it's Mm -hmm. quite a bit different than where I'm at. It uh, took me a lot longer to get there. And it's taken him. Yeah, I actually think I'm still sort of mulling over my theories about this, but I definitely think that men and women have sort of a different approach to it, especially when it comes to permission, right? Because I men are much more grounded in who they are, whereas as women, like I could be a completely different person tomorrow, and it would be totally normal. And yeah. Um, and and so like knowing who you are is like somewhat a big part of that intuition right like if I know who I am I will know every single day where I want to go eat when for me I'm like in 30 minutes I might pick a different restaurant than I would pick right now um Mm -hmm. but a big part of that for me has really been embracing that and just saying like like that that's okay like not feeling bad about about being a little more fluid right now do you think that has to do with Maybe we're totally getting off the topic of branding here, but maybe, or maybe we're not, it's hard to say. But, you know, when I think about boys and girls when they're being socialized young, and boys, the way that they interact with each other, they'll, like, punch each other, and then they're friends again. And they seem to have this different level of confidence about um, who they're friends with and how they're friends, whereas girls are taught that you have to have a best friend um you have to always be nice and it's this constant bumping up against being who we're not mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i can't help but wonder how much of that impacts how we are or maybe we're already naturally that way and that's why we're 
socialize that way. You know, chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. So I actually, I don't know what I would have said a week ago again, because I'm constantly <laughs> being someone different. But I just read um, this book and I really recommend it to every single human being on the planet. And it's called The Queen's Code. Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's tell me. by Alison Armstrong. Mm-hmm. And she has like a bunch of other materials. And right when I read the book, I dove into like all the other stuff. So, but basically it's about understanding men um, better. And it's way, way better than anything I've read about like, oh, Venus and Mars and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And it really, like, I think it explains a lot of sort of about what we're touching on about the differences between men and women, um, even as children. And, and I, I agree that like part of it is how we're raised, but then part of it, like, you know, there, we do have hormonal differences. We do have, um, different things she talks about. I'm not, I don't remember if it was in the book or if it was, um, in like a, a podcast or something when I listened to her speaking. Um, but she talks about how women are very, um, externally motivated and men are intrinsically motivated. So they're motivated, not motivated driven i'm trying to remember the words she used i don't want to butcher it but basically well, it like, sounds good to me <laughs> <laughs> like we're constantly like taking in and filtering information from outside so like that's why um, our friendships with other people are so important and we're constantly gauging our connection with other people whether they be men or women our friends not our friends we are like, we're inherently people pleasers um so that goes again back to that permission based whereas um men are more internally so who am i and then from there reaching out and like okay so they already know who they are so they know, they're going to know who they get along with and who they don't get along with and like they're not going to be upset because they're not friends with somebody. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas I think most women, <laughs> if I think about someone not liking me, it makes me a little bit anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's like the sort of the feminine masculine power too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, um... and there's not bad things about either of them. And that's really what I love about the Queen's Code is just, it's not a slam on men. It's not a slam on women. It's really... And, and again, it is more masculine, feminine, because there are, there are females who are more uh, masculine and, and males who are more feminine. But that feminine, masculine model, um, I thought it explained so much um, mm. and super helpful, both in like work relationships and personal relationships and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I think I have lots of conversations with my son about the roles of men and women. Mm. And he was saying, we had a friend over last night, and he was saying that he thinks that chivalry is dead because women have killed it. (laughs) (laughs) I think that that, I think that Alison Armstrong might agree with that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm definitely going to have to read the book now. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't think I disagree between media and feminism and not, and I'm totally not you know, hating on feminism at all in any way, shape or form. But there is a definitely an extreme form of that, which that makes women think that they don't need men or shouldn't want them and they can open their own doors and all of that sort of thing. And I think it would be really nice to get that balance back yep. where there's an understanding of how we do need each other. Yes. And how prevalent is that for everything that we're trying to do right like feminism is um, has been amazing because it's banged down all these ceilings and doors and walls and windows around what we can do but instead we've taken on this burden and of we have to do everything ourselves and you can see that in businesses you can see that with moms who work you can see that everywhere in relationships again how women are trying to do everything and burn themselves out on um, whereas if we do rely on other people whether it be a partner in our lives or our team or whatever it is we can accomplish so much more and feel so much better mm-hmm. yeah it's true it's uh so how does that um uh, how do how do we bring that into our business yeah well first for 
one thing, and I did talk about this a little bit when we were uh, experiencing some difficulties. But <laughs> well done on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> it sounded a little bit funny, but hopefully, hopefully, we provided some value. Was how when I first when I first dove into this branding thing, I did everything myself, and I'm really glad I did because I again I learned the terminology, I learned all the different pieces. I I know that I physically can go and create a logo for somebody, um, and I also learned what is not like my of my highest passion and purpose. Again, mm-hmm. it would be that creating that specifically going in and creating that logo um is not like there are people that are better at it than me um and so getting people on your team who are better than you are at things is so important um and that's one of the ways in which we can rely on other people support them and their genius and they can support us and our genius um a lot of people will tell you to like go make a list of things that you don't want to do and delegate and well, that's important. I think it's also important to not just not just give people like the crappy tasks that you don't want to do, but like <laughs> even the things that you're like mildly interested in, but like again, not your genius um, mm-hmm. to support somebody else's genius instead of just like brunt work. Um, yeah. And and that's something that we can learn to do in our homes too. Like, okay, what can I what can I get support in? Besides cleaning my toilet, uh, while well, I do want support in that, I also <laughs> like support in other areas that are. And there are some people who really like doing that. Exactly. Uh, take the really- key is to find those people who love doing what you don't love to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. That, I'm sure that you found um, having a team is a much better support model than doing everything by yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. And I found that. When we have tasks to do, it's sometimes just better to ask people to volunteer for them first. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because then they're taking on the thing that they're going to be happy to do. And yes. then when, as you work your way through the list of the tasks that need to be done, and then there's the uglier ones at the bottom, people don't mind so much taking on some of those uglier tasks because the ones that they volunteered for, they got, and they're going to be really happy doing those. Mm. Mm, yes. Such the reality is, is that I don't think you can farm out everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, then you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have your business. Like, even Richard Branson still still shows up. Like, he's still doing stuff, even though, you know, he has so many different businesses and, and so many different things. But if he didn't show up with his passion behind everything, like, it would all fall apart. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like I saw a day in his life, I was like, holy man, that's crazy. (laughs) But yet I kind of want his life. (laughs) (laughs) He is one cool dude. (laughs) He he really is. Yeah, yeah, I uh, quite enjoy listening to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's very cool. Yeah. So what else you got going on? Ooh, what else can we jam on today? (laughs) So something else that I like had to give myself permission for just to go back to that is to like talk about my woo woo ways. Like, (laughs) like well, we can talk about the woo woo. Yes. Um, And so when I'm whenever I'm about to like do something, whether that be like a soul fire TV episode or a podcast interview or a or anything, um, I usually will pull a card. Um, so now I'm up to a few different decks, but I did pull a card from a deck that I have called Buddha Doodles, <laughs> which is <laughs> super fun. So it's not like super woo, actually. It's just like a deck of cool drawn Buddhas, and they have like quotes on them or something. Right. Um, but the one that I Hold is so appropriate and it's a bunch of Buddhas gathered around a star and it says we need each other to shine and how appropriate is that for our conversation <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, <laughs> so um I just thought that I would insert that there it seemed appropriate <laughs> <laughs> that's too much fun <laughs> <laughs> so how about you have you um how woo are you? I'd love to know. Oh, I move in and out of woo. <laughs> I hear a, you. It's, 
an interesting relationship. Like I don't like I live on Vancouver Island and there is a lot of patchouli and tree hugging going on here. And <laughs> Like, let's just put that out there for people I haven't talked to before about it. But yes, it, um, you know, I guess there are some places that are more woo woo than here, but there's a lot of it here. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I'm always torn between that business side of me. That's, um, let's get this done. Let's do this. These are the steps we need to take and let's knock this out. And then yeah. it's like, but how do we feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know and that stuff takes so much longer um mm. so then I switch back to that business part where I'm just like no no let's just get this done and then mm. you know we go back to talking about how it feels and how it should feel and all of that other stuff that goes along with it um but you know I do believe there are much bigger things at work here mm-hmm. that than us and that's probably my biggest woo woo um you know, I went to, uh, I have a book launch happening September 1st, and it's in D.C., and it's with the author Incubator, and she owns a castle on the Potomac River. And so my book launch is going to be red carpet in a castle. It's going to be epic. Oh, my and gosh, amazing. Dress. What's that? Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I needed a dress, and I was out on the weekend, and I walked by the shop, and I saw a dress, and I went in the next day because they were closed. I went in the next day, and and I tried it on. I really liked it, and I was just like, oh man, that is more money than I can afford right now, or at least that's not where I'm choosing to put my money. And and then I know the owner of the store, and she says, she goes, well, it's coming on sale tomorrow, and the next day it was like half price. <laughs> <laughs> that's and I'm amazing. Like, what are the chances that um, she would have already have decided to do a sale in the store and that, you know, it was, it was on sale and it was pretty cool. And so now I get to get pictures of her dress on the red carpet and get to Facebook them all for her. And it's just creates this really amazing win-win. And it all started with a woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I and I love how you sort of described it, and that also makes me think a little bit again about the, like the masculine feminine conversation of a little more like okay, what wants to flow, and like okay, let's do this because um, both are really needed in business, mm-hmm. um, and they complement each other really really well. Um, and just because you're woo, like so, it's funny actually because I'm not actually a woo of like the patchouli type. So <laughs> there are so many. There's, there's other so types of woo. Yeah, there's so many kinds. And even if and the cool thing is, like, even if you are like, like, you know, you're like, I'm I'm writing this book, I'm getting this done, like, I'm blasting my through my to do list or like, whatever it is, like, the universe still has your back and the woo is still there. Even if you're not <laughs> like, even if you're not like acknowledging it right at that moment. <laughs> yeah, the universe doesn't need me to believe in it. Mm. It's just going to carry on doing what it's doing, mm, regardless of my feelings. Was that? Oh, oh, that was so beautiful. Like, oh my god, that resonated with my soul. Like, seriously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so well, true. It is, and it's it's funny because, on the one hand, I know in the scheme of things, I am completely insignificant. It's people are going to come and they're going to go, and the amount of people in this world that I'm going to touch. Um, even if I'm fortunate to touch a lot, it's still such a small percentage. And when I die, the world will keep spinning, believe it or not. And <laughs> life will go on and I will be forgotten about. So I understand on the one hand that we're very, very insignificant. But then when the universe presents something like the sale for this dress, you got to kind of think that you're not. Mm-hmm. That you are significant. You're significant enough that the universe put the dress on sale for you. You're significant enough to be born. Like, think <laughs> about the chances of that. Like, there are so many sperm that come out. <laughs> and, like, that specific egg and that specific timing. Like, it, like you're significant enough to be here. Yeah. And I love, like, the duality of it. Like, yes, we're super insignificant. Like, dust to dust like whatever the phrases are 
and or also here to make the biggest impact that we could make and we do matter even if we don't which is really the basis of that question that I asked myself Mm -hmm. is like what if I can be successful by being myself because like we already are successful like all of us have done something that we can be proud of yeah oh god for uh, sure mm -hmm. yeah it is it is an interesting thing and it's usually one of those things that I'm thinking about at stupid o'clock in the morning oh yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah about (laughs) Is it or isn't it? And then you have this, it doesn't have to be one or the other, yet it still is both of them simultaneously. It's, yeah, those are my favorite sort of wormholes to get my brain wrapped into. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. (laughs) Yeah, they totally are. So if people want to work with you, which I would recommend because I think you got your shit going on, um, (laughs) how will they find you? They can find me, yeah, again, at laurasprinkle.com. Um, I have a free three-day branding uh, mini course. So if you're, like, interested in exploring your brand for yourself at first before working further, um, I would re- definitely recommend doing that. I actually have all my clients do it anyway. So oh, yeah. <laughs> if you did want to work with me, you should do it anyway. Um, I think sometimes you just got to tell people what to do. Yes. Uh, And then the next step after that is having that brand revision session with me. So we dive deep into pretty much everything about your life. And it is so much fun. Like, it's not like a boring like, oh, like, what do like, and then what do you do? Like, no. (laughs) (laughs) You couldn't tell from this conversation. I like to laugh and I like to have fun. So it's fun. Um, And we really get to the heart of what's keeping you stuck. I'm not afraid to call you on your BS. Uh, at all so that mm-hmm. might happen <laughs> good and good I think that's important definitely um, mm-hmm. we'll create a, a really good branding scheme for you we will you know identify like the area that needs the most work so if you want to go off and do like explore on your own after that that's fine or we can continue to work together um, and I have a bunch of different ways to do that but but those are the ways to get started right and so that first um Working on your brand, that kind of thing. How long does that take? The the three day thing, or like the intensive with me. Um. Okay, hang on, I'm lost now. <laughs> well, there's a so, free a free like there's three videos and and they're like little worksheets, mm-hmm. and so that will maybe take you like one to three days, like depending on how fast you want to go pump it okay. out. Um, and then working with me, so we meet for like an hour, but the whole process takes a week. Um, I do have like a pretty significant, like several week waiting list for that. Uh, not months, right. so don't worry about that. But <laughs> <laughs> it is one on one with me, so my time is limited. But um, but yeah, so that takes like a week, and and we really like get in, get out, and I found that that sparks so much goodness for people. And I really got sick of like the whole like work with me for six months or a year model um, of slow growth. And I really like to like zap in there and zap on out. (laughs) Yeah, I totally get what you're talking about with that too, because I don't have the stamina to have a relationship with a stranger that's a coach for six months. (laughs) I don't, I just, you know, in and out, super quick, super friendly. Let's go. Let's get results. Yeah, like let's let's do it and and it'll be nice. Like I'm not going to be mean, but I'm it might sound mean if I'm calling you on your BS, but uh, it's going to be a lot of it's efficient. It's efficient. Um yes. and it's a lot of fun. And then from there, you know, we might work together on something on other projects, but really like that initial getting unstuck is so valuable for 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 you and to get clear on, okay, what is my brand? So then I can go take it to other people to work on it. Because once you know that you don't have to sit there and like decide things all the time. Like, Oh, I don't know what color that should be. Or like, <laughs> I right. don't know if that's old brand or not. Like if you know, and your we brand, do get hung up on the color, don't we? Oh, <laughs> we totally do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've seen people stall for months because they can't pick a color mm-hmm. for the brand. Oh yeah. 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 Colors or names of things, like all that doesn't doesn't have to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good point. Uh, well, we've got about <laughs> five minutes left here of this 
crazy, bizarre interview. I have to tell you, this has been one of the um, most bizarre <laughs> shows that I've had with respect to technical stuff, which has totally nothing to do with Nesha. It's probably all on my end because I, I have a thing with technology that hates me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> going forward, how do you want people to get a hold of you? Um, I would love them to just pop on over the site. I also have a free Facebook group, so they can head on over to Facebook and search Soulfire Mastermind. I'm in there all the time. Uh, so okay. people can contact me on Facebook, uh, message me, however they want. But, um, but yeah, I would love, love to talk to people about branding, about giving themselves permission, about all the stuff that we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um and and yeah and thank you so much this has been so much fun and i kind of think that it might be me if this has been the most bizarre show because i tend to have have like technical funkies happen (laughs) (laughs) but you know i like that we just roll with it (laughs) it's pretty common for me to have technology malfunction as well so perhaps it's our combined energy that is just too epic for the internet (laughs) It really is. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I'm going with. <laughs> yeah. So if you have one thought to leave, um, you know, the, our listeners with, what would that be? <sighs> one oh, my God, I thought I lost I... you there for a second. I was like, oh, my oh, God, are you kidding me? <laughs> I just did a bit. I just did a pause and I breathe. Yeah, I actually, you know what? That is going to be my thought for people because sometimes we feel like we have to, have to, like whatever it is, like whenever you catch yourself saying that word, like I have to, Mm -hmm. like pause, (laughs) take a deep (laughs) breath and really think about that because like, again, give yourself permission. You don't have to do crap. Like you can do whatever you want to do. Um, so catch yourself in the in those thought patterns stop and breathe because stopping and breathing will again reconnect you with with what you really do have to do um and it probably isn't that thing that you think that you have to do that you really don't want to do uh, <laughs> so there are sometimes there are things also, maybe that we oh, have yeah. to do but we lose sight of why we have to do them yes yes exactly and if you can reframe it then that will make a world of difference also um Mm -hmm. so i wrote on my to-do list yesterday i instead of writing to-do list i wrote like i don't remember what i wrote like to have happen with joy and ease or something like something ridiculous (laughs) but like as long as i can put a little bit of joy in it like even if that phrase like sounds crazy and i'll never write it again like, as long as I can make it a little bit more fun, then I'm golden. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's a, it's a huge point. I think it's, um, we could probably do an entire show on that. It's <laughs> not, yeah. Finding those little ways of making whatever it is that you're doing more fun to be doing. Mm-hmm. And it, because we have two ways of going through our life, and that's either excited about what we're doing or pissed off about what we're doing. And well, I guess there's neutral. So three ways. And I think neutral is just as bad as being pissed off. So screw it. We're back to two ways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, it is a choice. It is a choice to say, you know, I'm going to hate this because I don't want to do it. Or this is going to bring me joy one way or another down the road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been the absolute pleasure having you on the show and uh, taking care of things while they were malfunctioning. Damn, maybe you just need to get your own radio show. <laughs> it's just, I'm like, I'm just chatting away here, but hopefully the listeners enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. You had so many good things to say and lots of thought provoking things, which me personally, I absolutely love. I love leaving a guest and going, huh, think about that for a while. So you've actually uh, stirred up some things in my little old brain. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a ton of fun, and you ask really good questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> All right. Well, we will definitely have to stay in touch. Yes, I agree. I look forward to it. So, until next Thursday, speak up because you have something to say, and I want to hear it. Thanks for hanging out with Natural Born Speakers. 
but don't stop now. Contact Allison with questions to be a guest or hire her as a speaker. Go to dominothinking.com. See you same place and time next week.